what's going on everyone welcome back to another special episode of just my opinion reviews guys we are talking power a book four force season two episode three titled war and ice cream what does that mean tommy and diamond expand their business to prisons the feds put together a task force to take down cbi and Jannard struggles to maintain control. Tommy faces off with Walter and gets closer to avenging Liliana's death. Mm -hmm. Guys, we both want to let you know that this is going to be spoiler field. Okay, we're going to spoil this episode up, down, left, right, in and out as if you've already seen it. That is your warning. And if you happen to like the video, if you happen to like our commentary, leave us a thumbs up, leave a comment in the chat, in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button, share, and become part of the family. And as you can see, I'm not by myself. I got my big homie from the east side. Oh, no, no, no. He's not on the east side today. I'm going to let him tell y'all where he at right now. But it's it's Mr. Lamont Tyson with Get A Life Games, Life Games Productions. Sir, how are you doing this fine morning? I'm doing good, man. And as he alluded to, ladies and gentlemen, I'm West Coast Mont today. I just got off the airplane in LA and had the pleasure to meet and sit beside the whole plane ride, the big homie, Rich Paul, the big, big homie, Rich Paul. We got a chance to get to know each other. He's trying to get into film. Of course, you know, I whispered in his ear a couple of things I knew about film and hopefully, you know, me and him going to meet up while I'm out here. So I'm honored to be with B. Avery, which is why I'm up here so early in the damn morning, because this is what we do. We are brothers yeah. keeper and we enjoy this show. So let's make it fun. Yes, yes. And again, I, I said this before we hit the record button. This is pre-recorded. And I just got to let all the people know, Lamont, I really do appreciate you um, coming through and uh, helping your boy out with this recording. Y'all, it is 3 a.m. in the morning right now where Lamont is on the west side. It's 5 a.m. where I am where we're recording this video. This dude is tired. He got a whole family. He got babies that he got to feed and he's traveling across the country and still is waking up at three in the morning to help your boy. That is just how awesome this man is. And so please, whether you're watching this video on my channel or his thumbs up, super chat him, cash app him, something, man, just to show his appreciation. I, I really do appreciate it. So Lamont, thank you, man. Uh, you know, love you so much, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, stuff like this is greatly, greatly appreciated, man. For sure, bro. Happy to be here. Right back at you. Let's make it happen. And real, and also real quick, you know, I do have on the hoodie. I know it's hot outside. The only reason I have on a hoodie is because literally all of my long sleeve t-shirts are drying right now. I don't put them in the dryer and I was finna put one on. It's still wet. Also, I got the braids. Y'all can let me know how y'all feel about that. I got my haircut appointment to get the fade and the trim and all that a couple of hours from now. And just real quick, before we get started, I just want to clean your house a little bit. I saw a couple of comments on my video and Lamont's video last time. And um, some people had a disdain or a disgust for our commentary on the way that we were discussing the sex scenes in the power show. Now, I'm being genuine right now. I'm not trying to sound slick. And I did address one of the comments like, wait a minute, the sex scenes are a part of the show. And we're talking about those scenes just like every other scene in the show. So I don't understand what the pushback was for. I don't think that we got too out of control having fun talking about the women. But if that was offensive to you, um, you know, please let us know in a more um, a, a respectful way, because y'all, some of y'all was calling us horn dogs and things like that. But I don't know. We were just trying to have some fun and, you know, uh, you can't please everybody. So I just wanted to kind of just throw that out there and see how everybody else felt about it. But let's go ahead and get into this episode. Lamont. Mm -hmm. uh again I, I really did enjoy this episode man this season so far is light years above season one and my guy did we get an oscar no not an oscar did we get an emmy award performance from miss kate in this episode at the aa meeting like i'm really surprised and also another character that i'm not too fond of is walter but he was making me laugh my ass off in this episode, talking to Tommy, like, oh, you think you can throw a wrench in the Claudius uh, business, but you can throw, you can't, you think you can mess up my shite or my shit? It's just the way he said it with that Irish accent. 
bro i was over here rolling we still don't have that much dialogue from polly but i even like him coming through oh this is some bullshit i don't trust him anyway but it's so much to talk about a lot happened in this episode i really really did enjoy it justice was served to a degree towards the end even though it was kind of sloppy you know talking about wendell or little k or whatever you want to describe them but go ahead and hop in here man how did you feel about this episode did you like it did you hate it you somewhere in between how'd you feel my brother oh loved it man like i said from day from first episode of this season i said this thing is way better than last season yeah. and they keep escalating episode to episode i have to agree with b avery but although i am very biased i will admit that kate egan has always been one of my favorite characters in the se- in the in the whole power series mm-hmm. uh, the way she portrays that character yeah i had a chance to get to know the person portraying the character which just made me like the character even more because the person portraying her is is a big sweetheart she's a big supporter of our community she does a lot of things in the community to try to support african americans and make our voices be heard having said that i really enjoy her portrayal of a mother who's torn a mother who's trying to figure out what the hell mistakes she made and really don't understand what she done wrong. She knows right. she done wrong, but right. don't know what she did wrong. And her portraying that shit was sad and funny as hell all at the same damn time. But she brought it home full circle when Tommy made her realize something that was so important to him was that damn ice cream. Yeah. And yeah. In the end, she had the ice cream in the yeah. freezer for him. She had to answer the tough question to JP, did you leave me because I was black? Right. She basically said, yeah, but yeah. she didn't come out and say it, but she was like, I didn't know what to do. I was young. And JP stepped up eventually and showed just how great of a character he is by eventually accepting that she didn't know what she was doing and she still showed him love. Yeah, All man. that be Avery, my greatest fears, they're definitely coming true. K. Egan is dying this season. Oh this, no! This, this is all a setup for death. It's oh all no! Death. And it's just a matter of how is she going to die and who's going to pull the trigger. Oh man! Shout out to Miss Patricia uh, Callumber. Miss P. Uh, What's yeah, up, Miss P? I, I I love how you put that, man. Well said, Lamont. You know, you gave her her flowers. I don't want Kate to die. Um, I she's never been a character to me that I love. I never hated Kate. You right. know, I never just dis- disliked her, had a disdain for her, but she just wasn't someone that got me excited. You know, she wasn't at the top of my list. If you were naming my top five or ten, you know, favorite power characters. But she really did come through in this one, man. Um, and like you said, it was sad and funny at the same time because, you know, she she had a messed up life herself, you know. And right. so I have to give her that. And so in, in some weird shape or form, she kind of did the best thing that she could you know given how she was brought up in her environment and stuff like that and she thinks that she ran a whole marathon like i'm gonna make amends i'm gonna right. say i'm sorry and that i wasn't the best mother and that's gonna be it but no that was you know that was just not the reaction that she got she's up her yelling at tommy like wait a minute why are you making this so difficult for me you know and he's going down the list oh you got a list Hell yeah, he has a list. <laughs> you left this man stranded when the man, this boy stranded when he was six years old. Six. Can you imagine that, uh, Lamar? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't want to get in all your personal business, but uh, me personally, man, in, in six years old, I had everything handed to me. I didn't have to want for nothing. I don't know what I would have done if I had to steal food in the first grade because I don't know who my daddy is or where he is and my mom abandoned me. You know, and so, yeah, and she you know she she thinks that like I said she ran a marathon but no it it takes much more than just I'm sorry and I wasn't a bad mother but it, at least it's something you know That's so right. I'm kind of I'm kind of riding on the fence here a little bit you know but that just goes to show man as as old as Tommy and and JP kind of had the same reaction as old as these men are I'm assuming uh early 40s you know you can correct me if I'm wrong I'm late third I'm, I, I say early 40s. I don't know, late 30s, early 40s, um, you know, they're grown, but you can still see how that relationship or lack thereof has affected them 
and it's still, you know, holding, they still have a chip on the shoulder, you know, because right. they, they, they were all, be, well, especially Tommy, he was busy. Mom, I got shot at. He didn't say that. I got this going on. I got that going on. But as soon as she was like, oh, I have a man's, he made time, immediately sat down with a smile on his face and was ready to receive all of that. And again, it just it just wasn't enough. You know, it, it just wasn't enough. But at, at the same time, um, I, I do like the attempt right there. And so, you know, if you're going through anything like that or what, whether either side you're on, you know, say you're sorry. And um, it also just goes to show, man, like I've, I've heard a lot of people say this in the past few years is that your life would be so much better. If even though your if your my parents was great, I love them. Thank you so much, you know, for the blessings I received. But any anything that your parents may have lacked in, it, you you can still have a better life if you forgive them, you know, for what they did or didn't do. And uh, like I said, this they they got a chip on their shoulder, and you know, if they even though Kate was wrong, if JP or Tommy were to forgive. Uh, Kate, I think things will flow much smoother for them mentally. What do you have to say about that? You agree or disagree? Uh, I, I'm kind of the person who's been in the, been in their situation. Except for my mom didn't withhold food, right. but our relationship is not that good because of um, the best way I can put it is just a lack of uh, discernment um, for what it's like to go through a kid at my age, various different things. And so our relationship has never been all that great as an adult because there was never a bond put in place that sealed me to her. My bond was with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And so I can relate to what Tommy and JP are feeling on the difference that my mom didn't do crack. She didn't per se withhold food. And as I'm watching this unfold with those brothers and the mother, I also was thinking to myself, it takes a whole lot more to be a parent than to just open your legs and spit out a child. Right. Period. So the, the same scrutiny a woman would put a man through by saying it takes more for you to just donate sperm to be a parent to a child. It takes the same thing more for a mother to be a parent to a child as well. Just because you put a roof over a kid's head, you give them food, doesn't mean you're building a bonding relationship with them that you can have when they become adults. And that's what Kate Egan didn't do for either kid. Right. And I can relate to that because that didn't happen with my relationship, my mom. And I wouldn't say that it's a situation where I per se forgave her other more so that I just moved on. I realized that she wasn't equipped and educated enough to do the things she should have done for me as a child. And I just write it off as that, you know, I don't, hold it against her per se. I don't throw it in her face. I just let her know, you know, I am who I am because of the different things I've gone through. And she plays a role in my daughter's life now. Um, so I wouldn't per se say that I've forgiven her for anything. I just don't deal with it. You I'm know, sorry. I don't deal with it. I don't, I don't badger her about it. I just move on. I'm an adult who's trying to do the best to make the best decisions. And I have a daughter who I'm trying to do that with. And the daughter has been the thing that's brought us together. That's wonderful to hear, man. And uh, thank you for that commentary and sharing a little bit of your personal life. And I will say in a little over three years that we've been knowing and working uh, with each other, man, um, I, I, I can I can tell that, you know, you kind of been through a thing or two. And I'm really proud of you for the man that you are today. Uh, I look up to you in a number of ways and have a lot of respect for you. So I think you're doing a great job. I don't know what you say to yourself when you look in the mirror, but uh, it should be two thumbs up in my in my opinion. So I just want to throw it out there real that, quick. Man. Hell yeah. Hell, hell, hell yeah. It should be two thumbs up for you too, young brother. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. appreciate that. So Kate Egan is one thing that stood out to uh, both of us in this episode. Lamont, I want to give it to you, man. What was one of the highlights for you? I want to kind of change it up a little bit. What what are you salivating at the mouth to get off your chest and express yourself with? In well, this you know, episode? I was happy to see my boy Rojas. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was happy to see our boy Jay uh -huh. Moore. Please go subscribe to his YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. He uh -huh. came back with a vengeance, and he was placed in just the most awkward situation possible. And he does not want to work with Diamond. Diamond is the one that put him in the wheelchair. Yeah. Diamond is now pushing his drugs through his territory. 
he really wants to eliminate the business, but by the end of the show, due to Diamond's in jailhouse rock girlfriend, the CEO, right. he basically forced J-Mo into a situation where he was going to be in solitary confinement unless he got payment from the drugs that's pushing. And do I think we've heard the end of Rojas? Absolutely not. Oh, no. He, he might take it and act like he's good in the beginning, but ladies and gentlemen, how would you feel if you had to work for a person that put you in a wheelchair forever? Yeah. yeah. Meaning you can't have sex. Yeah. You can't feel it when you go to the bathroom. Man. You can't walk. You're always yeah. reminded of the, the viciousness of this person. Yeah. And now you got to yeah. accept money from this person. So, yeah, this is not the end of Rojas. No way. Shout out to Jay Moore, man. Uh, you're doing Love a hell Jay. of a job, sir. You're doing mm -hmm. a hell of a job. Great job. Yeah, man, uh, I, I like this involvement too, man. He he was telling this, uh, What are, I think her name was Karen Sue or I know. Karen or, or Sue. Karen yeah. Sue. <laughs> Yeah, he lawyer. was like, oh, yeah, he's like, oh, who the F are you? You know what I'm saying? That, you know, some, I like some lawyer pussy and all of this stuff. And ah. he, he he don't want to work with Diamond to the fact to where he would pass up $5 keys, Lamont. $5, $5 keys? Dollars, that is a lick right there, man. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I would probably feel the same way if somebody yeah. put me in a weird chair. You know, sometimes pride... It is a bad thing, but sometimes, yeah. man, that's all you got. You know what I'm saying? All you so got. <laughs> I, I can't necessarily uh, blame him for that right there. Um, I, I, you know, I can sympathize. I can't empathize, but I can sympathize with them. Yeah, but that, that's that's kind of interesting. I, I'm really eager to see um, how that's going to play out. But as uh, we're, we're talking about, man, uh, that's what your boy uh, Diamond is doing right now. Um, you know, he, he's had a, a number of women in this episode and now, you know, he's sleeping with the correctional soft correctional officer again. Uh, she's very attractive in my opinion. I didn't believe her at first. Um, uh, I mean, I did believe her at first. I thought she was really offended, you know, that, uh, he, he, that she thought he was trying to butter her up or whatever, but she flipped the script and I'm like, Oh no, I got you. I'm just playing. I got everything together i got everything organized you know let's just talk numbers and um you know let's let's get this party started you know what i'm saying but uh i want to hear your commentary on that but also to be a fr quite frank with you the operation in the jail seemed a bit um unnecessary or you know they're popping popcorn and they go into the bathroom and she putting the drugs in the popcorn bag. I'm just like, can't you just give him the bag of popcorn? Like, her, I, I don't know. I ain't never just moved weight before. So maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, but how do you feel about that, man? I just kind of I kind of thought that little handoff was a, a, a <laughs> bit um, a bit much. Or am I am I tripping or, or how you feel? She you know, she had to do it that way because of all the cameras and everything that's going on in terms of connecting her to any said business. Right. Um, right now, the way it's set up, no matter what they do, it will be hard to pinpoint her as the person that's getting these drugs in here. But the way that they're having to go through the rigmarole of the bathroom, the popcorn, the girl pretending like she's eating popcorn while the camera's looking and then passing him some, it would be very hard to prove that it's her doing it per se. Yeah. Um, so I can understand why they did that. And I feel like that was the writers trying to get creative and trying to make sure there's a big cover so that our CEO, Dark Chocolate, don't get in any trouble. So I, I could yeah. buy that. Um, it wasn't hard for me to suspend my imagination on the way they set that up. Right. If anything, it's hard for me to suspend my imagination on she's been digmatized by Diamond <laughs> so well yeah. that she's down to do this. Or is it that she feels like she's missing out on some extra income because, you know, these parole officers and these COs, they make a little less than teachers make. And mm. they're in a more dangerous situation. So maybe she feel like, you know, I'm going to get this dick and I'm going to get this D money as well. Yeah, right, so right. and but it all just makes me wonder when it all comes to a head, what is she going to do? Yeah. What what, yeah. what is she going to do when it comes to task force, when they get to figuring things out? When Rojas decide that he's going to get some retribution, what is she going to do then? Yeah. 
What is she going to do, man? And um, the, this the whole situation, especially uh, in the jail, in the prison, man, it just seemed. Now, I understand what you're saying about the cameras. Uh, I didn't mention it, but, you know, I, I know there are cameras in that room and, you know, you just kind of got to hide it a little bit here. But, you know, a sl little slide of hand. But I, I don't know. It, it just it just seemed obvious to me, um, even, you know, with them trying to, you know, hide it and whatnot. I was just like, OK, it, it, and. And even that this whole scene right here, I'm just like, man, just, you know, somebody sees something out the corner of their eye, you know, the whole operation is over with, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I mean, I knew there was a crime that went on behind bars, but I still did not know that it was to that level, to that degree, you yeah. know? And so I'm just like, man, y'all are, yeah, you know, I, I'm not trying to judge nobody like you ain't learned your lesson yet, you know, but at the same <laughs> time, it's just like, woo. You're already behind the wall, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to get out. I ain't trying to go <laughs> deeper into the prison. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've lost. You know what I'm saying? Like let me let me be good and read some books or something. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't know. I don't know that I, I, I'm different. I, I'm, I'm different like that. I'm different like that. How do you feel? How do you think it's gonna pop off between um, between Tommy and Claudia? Because he is pretty much convinced that uh, that she is the one that killed uh liliana now we know that that is true and uh, he suspects that you know he's up here talking to walter and this is again one of the scenes that i was laughing my ass off with them going back and forth it was uh, funny yeah it was, it was funny. yeah that accent was definitely coming through uh with walter and you know liliana it, and i gotta be honest bro I think yeah. this is the first time where not Liliana, excuse me, Claudia looked somewhat cute in the little dress okay. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like to to I I don't know. I saw the dress. I was all oh, she looked cute in the dress. You know what I'm saying? Usually when I look at her, I'm just like yuck. But uh, because of her character, and um, I know we had the PP jokes and all that stuff. But <laughs> um, yeah, man. So we got we got this going on right here between uh, you know, he, she had her changing the passwords on the dialysis machine and. That's a horrible thing to do um, to your father. And, yeah. uh, at, you know, at, at the end, uh, Tommy pulls the gun on her. and was like, hey, I know it was you. I'm going to blast your head off. How do you think this is going to play out between them, man? What you think? What you think? She's going to probably wind up working for him in some capacity. Mm. Uh, again, with her, when she's got tension with certain men, I just love the tension. Like, she escalates tension. Like, this whole scene right here, boy, it was tense. It was so thick, you could cut it with a butter knife. A Wolverine's claws, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I think her ass is scared, whether she wants to admit it or not. Yeah. She's scared. Yeah. And yeah. she sees what's going on with the Irish in Dublin coming down on her dad. And she wants to salvage some of that legacy and she knows she's not going to be able to salvage that legacy with the brother being in place trying to undermine the whole organization. So right. I think that at some point in time, she's going to try to work for Tommy to work off her debt and killing Lily and then eventually try to double cross Tommy. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting take right there. Um, we know that it was Jannard that was trying to work with her as well um, in one of the last episodes. And she turned that down. So, yeah, she may. Yeah, she turned it down treason. And she may go over to CBI. Uh, but you, do you, you think she's going to live throughout the rest of the season? Or you think, yeah. uh, okay, okay. I, I, I don't feel any jeopardy of her dying. Zero. Really? Okay. If I had to pick anyone in the Flynn, Flynn family that's going to die, try saying that real fast, ladies and gentlemen. Flynn family. Flynn family. Flynn family. I can't even do Flynn it. Flynn family. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I can't it even do that. that's going to die. Vic mm -hmm. would be the one out of the Flynn family that I think would die first. So I don't see her being in danger of death at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Let us know what you think down below and uh shout out to Polly, man. Let, let's, Love let's him. get him. Let's, let's get Polly in here, man. Get him some more lines of dialogue, man. Polly, right. Polly is one of my favorites, man. I, I really I like, did like him. You know what I'm saying? He's, and, uh, he's got that, that chivalrous honor. Even yeah. though he's even though he's been, um, you know, he's going by the code of honor to someone who's an antagonist. Yeah. The fact that he's so loyal, he gives good counsel. Everybody wants that person in their life that they can right. trust and go to that they know is going to have their back, that they know is going to give them good counsel, whether it's what they want to hear or not. 
And so it's easy for us men be anyway to relate to a cat like Paulie because he is that that one person that really has your back regardless of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I like him. You know, he can be rowdy when he needs to, but also during this scene, he was just also like, okay, let's take it, can, let's take it down a notch, and let's not beef in front of everybody. You know, if y'all even if you hate each other, you're still family. You got to represent. Walter kind of gave him the hand, like I got this. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, shout shout out to Polly. Uh, I like him. Uh, he you know he does he does have a code of honor. He just working for the wrong side, in my opinion. You know, uh, but since we're talking about Flynn. And the drugs and all that. I will say that one thing that was disappointing to me uh -oh. was the way that um, they took out Dublin or, or the the Irish guy because he he claimed that their carrier got interrupted. And uh, Vic, well, actually, Walter is not the one that wanted to go through with that. It was Vic being impulsive yeah. mm -hmm. and you know executed him. I did not expect that at all. You know, seeing how it appeared that that Walter was afraid as well during one of the previous episodes. Like, man, if we don't get this together, they're going to take my head off. And then they just, you know, Vic just disposed of him so easily. I was yeah. kind of disappointed with that. I I, I wanted, uh, it was kind of anticlimactic to me. Or, or how do you feel? You agree or disagree? Um, No, I, I understand why they did it to Vic because you got to think of the events here. So, Vic is trying to clearly undermine his father. He wants to take his father down because Vic is chocolatized. Mm -hmm. Which, ladies and gentlemen, boys yeah. and girls, my Anglo-Saxons, brothers out there, mm -hmm. when you get you a taste of that chocolate meat, and then you can't have it no more. And you've seen in this episode when Homeboy was trying to call black folks on the South Side monkeys and all that, right. you've seen how Vic jumped in there, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These I black like sisters that. can change racists into straight laced dudes who understand the struggle, and that's what's going on with Vic. And he is so hell bent on revenge, he wants to undermine his daddy. Part of undermining his daddy is he set up a situation where the courier with the drugs got arrested. So what did he do? Vic did two things. You know what? Yeah. I'm 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 I didn't mean to cut you off. I meant to take a note. Because I did not understand that part, but it yeah. makes sense now. That's what he okay. Yeah, I feel it. Rip me up in the comments if you want to, because some of y'all be like, Oh, you're not paying attention, Brandon. Get it together. Thank you, Lamar. Go go ahead with, with, with your uh go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go you ahead. good, you good. So Vic did two things. Number one, those bad drugs will never touch the south side because the police got them now. So that's mm -hmm. one way he saved black culture, thanks to Glow. Glow and those glowful panty draws, those black <laughs> sister panty draws, kept some people from dying on the south side. That's one thing. Number mm -hmm. two, he also undermined his daddy so bad that the dad just lost money that he needs to pay Dublin. And then they get back to the guy, this guy right here, to further undermine the daddy because he knows that the daddy could use this guy to get his money back. He shoots him on purpose because he's trying to send a message to the daddy. He's trying to send a message to the daddy that, look, we so strong, we don't need his help. But more importantly, what daddy don't know that he's doing is I'm going to take you down another peg, dad. You find another way to get this money, and we in further trouble with the Irish. So I got to give it up to Vic in this episode. His, his anger toward getting revenge for Glow is making for good TV for me, even though the character is still weakling. Still a week. I got you. Week. Right, right. Very impulsive. Uh okay. Well, that that makes sense, man. Um, I, I, I appreciate that breakdown. And um, you know, again, if you know y'all gonna rip me up if you want to, um, that just kind of went over my head with I was like, what 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 is he doing? But um uh, that, that makes Bro, much more sense. That it makes happens, much more sense. ladies and gentlemen. It happens on these shows and movies. Like sometimes when sometimes different things happen. Where the volume goes down, you might not quite hear what they're saying. You might see something, but it could be interpreted a different way and vice versa. No reviewer can get every single thing right, especially one who is reviewing like 5,100 shows like B. Avery is doing. So you got to, <laughs> when you're dealing with reviewers, you got to be a little patient with us. And that's when we lean on you to say something in the comments to help us better get an understanding of how you interpret it, said situation. So post your comments about the situation. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that, man. I, I sure do appreciate that. I, I sure do appreciate that because, 
you know, some people get a high off. Yes, he made a mistake, and I can call him out and in, in, in front of everybody, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, but <laughs> and and that never bothers me because them people's them people's um, TV ideology typically doesn't go any further than Tyler Perry stuff. And let's just uh, keep. It I won't. I won't. I won't say all that. But I, 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 they, they, I, I they need that. to expand their horizons a little bit. So. When someone says, and it might not be true, but when someone says these attack-based comments toward me, I just think that whether it's true or not, just so I don't waste the time and going back and forth with them. Right on, right on, right on. Now, let's uh, talk about this real quick. Um, you know, the very beginning of the episode where Tommy is flipping out, you know, because he got shot at. And yeah. unfortunately, the little girl died. And so I love the continuity from the end of the first episode. I mean, the end of the last episode, episode two, to the beginning of this one right here. And also, one thing I'm really liking about Diamond and Tommy's relationship is they're never on the same page. I mean, yeah. they want the same thing, but they're always bumping heads. At one point, excuse me, Diamond's like, hey, man, we need to slow down. Tommy's like, we need to speed up because of this. And they seem to always get the job done. And also, I like the fact that Tommy showed up on Gennard's uh doorstep like this and called him out and was just like oh i can read between the lines you don't even have control over your own people man how are you the leader you know um i, I liked all that right there and how they're going after window and k uh how do you feel about all that you know this the be or the beginning of the episode and what do you think is going or no actually I'm, I'm gonna wait till i ask you that but you know how, how you feel about the beginning and um uh tommy uh, approaching Janar like this in their conversation like I said, if 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 stressed as fuck was a human, it'd be Janard. Yeah. He, he's got everybody coming down on him. And if you just look at the conversation between him and Tommy, dude is scared as hell of Tommy. Like, he don't want to admit it, but the acne he portrayed lets you know that he's a little timid of Tommy. And that part when Tommy said, if I have to come get little K, then it also mean I'm gonna have to come get you too. Yeah. Jannard was shook as hell. You know, yeah. I would have loved to have seen how that scene went down. The Shanti was there at his side to talk some shit to Tommy because Tommy talking junk and going back and forth with women is very hilarious to me. It's very yeah. entertaining. And that's what it's gonna come down to because it seems to me like more and more Shanti is running Jannard's business. Than he mm -hmm. is. He's making mm -hmm. the coach the cogent decisions, telling him what are the right choices to make because he's just out of control. He's out of wits to the point where my man, there's a reason why we call him Junkie Gennard last season. He's so stressed, my man, that he's reverting back to drugs as an escape, similar to what Vic has done with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I do agree that the scene opening up with Tommy and Diamond Diamond kind of giving pushback to Tommy's behavior. I love it. I love yeah. it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it also goes goes to show you that Tommy is basically calling his own punches. Like yeah. Diamond ain't going to step and stop him because they're making so much money. Plus, he realizes just how dangerous Tommy is. Tommy has not that much to lose. But I think that this season, when K. Egan dies, we're going to really see how much more Tommy had to lose. Because mm. as of right now, the only thing he's lost is Kate Egan. I mean, excuse mm. me, Liliana. When they lose the mother, we might really see Tommy go crazy. So I've, I've enjoyed the dynamic with Tommy and the CBI brothers. Pull out the notebook, Lamont. Pull out the notebook. Uh -oh. Let's let's uh -oh. take some notes here. You this, this saying my LA notebook, ladies yes. and gentlemen. LA notebook, LA notebook. So Kate is dying. What what episode is Kate dying in this ep in this season? Oh, this I said it last week. She's gonna die episode nine. Episode nine, okay. Episode nine. And I believe that episode eight, she might relapse back into drugs because things have gotten so stressful. And then episode nine, somebody's going to take her out. Okay. Uh, you can put down for me that she's going to make it. She's going to live through the episode. I mean, through the season, okay? So go ahead and mark that down next to be Avery right there. You guys pull out your notebooks in the comment section. We want to hear. Now, also... We was talking about, um, you know, you, you made a comment talking about Tommy and the way that he engages with the women. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And he she was not in this episode, but she was texting Tommy back and forth a little bit. He was saying, Hey, you know, what's up with the with the ride, you know, the driving lessons and all this stuff. And at first she left him on red. He had a little typo. You said that they was gonna hook up. I think you said episode four. Is that correct? That's it. Episode four. And what did I say? Six or seven? Yeah, you said seven. Seven? Okay, okay, okay. So you still think it's gonna pop off next episode between them? Look, she wasn't it. It's, it's next. <laughs> look, B, it's next episode. Check this out. Ah. When, when she in the last in the previous episode when she sold him uh. up and they was flirting, she uh-huh. flirted back. Okay. Like she she flirted back. So if she does give him the draws. Either the she's gonna draws. do it and cheat on her current doctory boyfriend, uh-huh. or she's gonna break up with the doctory boyfriend in like a hellfire and brimstone type breakup. Mm. Like she catches him screwing the nurse in the break room. Oh wow. wow! And then all of a sudden she wants to get all that frustration out. And Tommy is the dude that's been lingering, or yeah. it's just gonna be a full out. This dude is a potato cake. You know, he's ready okay. with aisle number seven of food lines, <laughs> and I'm yeah. ready for some steel, real steel, and it's going to run to Tommy. But it's happening, episode four. I can hear the way Maria and that nice South American accent is going to be screaming, Poppy, and Tommy is going to be digging in wow. every stroke. I see. Wow. It. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, y'all let us know. Let us know what y'all think. Is it going to go down in episode four or is it going to go <laughs> episode down in episode seven? seven? Uh, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. down. It's, just, it's just a matter of uh, when, you know. She already just, done told the boy he got pretty eyes, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I think the fact that he was flirting with her while he was in pain and she's seen his soft side already in terms of how he can be emotionally. I think all that is just turning her on and you know, she kind of alluded to it. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just a countdown to episodes. When is it going to happen? Okay. Stand on the women, man. We got to talk about uh, Shanti here. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I think she looks better every episode to me, bro. She is uh, she's very attractive, very I, smart, I, and can fight, you know, look, like um, triple threat. Everybody knows how I feel about dark chocolate women. Like, that's my top pick of anything, dark chocolate sisters. That's like the cream of the crop for me. And I not only does she look good, but she's smart. That's why I said I yeah. feel like she's going down the road of kind of being like a version of Tasha for Jannard, the way Tasha was for Ghost. It's just that Ghost wasn't as dumb as Jannard, and Ghost was never really into the drugs like Jannard. So it's right, kind of right, like right. Shanti has had to step into this role because the man that she's choosing to go down on the battleship with, he's spiraling out of control so bad that she's going to have to step in and take over the organization so that she don't lose what she's getting from this relationship. Right. And uh, Jannard is tripping his ass off, man. He's tripping balls. Like, the way that he was talking to her, like, because she don't want to give all the information, in, you yeah. know, saying, hey, if you don't, uh, it, but if people, like, like uh, Tommy took out Chewy, I don't think she knows that Tommy did it, but then he wants to go take out Wendell or Little K, but she's saying don't do that because it's, it was justified he was like, well, fuck everybody and fuck you. How, why, why are you going to talk to her that way, bro? She on, on on time after every episode of this season, she done gave you a stack of money because you don't have you don't have the you can't pay your own bills. Right. Like and, and, and giving you ass, giving you coochie, giving you advice. And you want to say F her? What is wrong with you? You are a moron. I was so mad at Jannard for talking <laughs> to her that way. Like you are a dumbass. Like, bro, like she is on your team. She is a rider. This is. This, she should be your your main lieutenant, your right arm, your 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 right hand man, your right hand woman. Are you mm-hmm. gonna talk to her that way? And, I, I, I'm I'm surprised she didn't put on the gloves and swing on them or, or, or whatever. After she that, she really cares about him. Obviously, yeah. that she was able to take that punishment for him, and maybe she understands that he's under so much distress from Serbs, Miguel, Tommy, mutiny in his own organization that she was willing to deal with what he was throwing at her. And eventually you saw in the very end, she gave up little K's grandma's address. Yeah. 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 He's a, uh, he tripping right there, man. Y'all, y'all please let me know what y'all thinking about that. I thought that was way out of pocket. I thought that was uh, inappropriate. 
um i think that was foolish of him and it's gonna come back and bite him in the ass you know you you didn't already lost well i was gonna say lost two people but you killed the dude at the end and of course we're gonna be talking about that but yeah man um th th this just wasn't wise man so you just need to show her a bit more respect don't be talking to her crazy like that uh for i mean even if she didn't do even if she uh didn't do all the things that she did for him um just talking like that to a woman in general makes me uneasy but you know i'm not trying to uh, anyway that, i'm that's just how i feel about the situation you know what i'm saying so right uh y'all y'all let me know how y'all feel about that but uh how you how you feel about a uh, young barack right here pre-cut you know uh how'd you feel about his speech and you know we got to get rid of the violence and everybody's showing up we got this task force down here it's the it's the dea the fbi and the cpd coming together to take down treason and and cbi and and all of that uh i was laughing right here where her, he said i ain't talking to you nigga shut the fuck up he said okay okay <laughs> and didn't uh didn't really have much to say uh after that but right after that it turns into this right here if i can find the image where um you know that where diamond and that same little boy are talking right outside of the barbershop where the hell is the, oh here we are here's the image right here and uh he gets the cut i'm at first i was like is that the same boy it looks completely different that shows yeah. how how powerful a haircut really is Definitely. uh but he, he he gets jumped out here man and uh you know look and and the diamond and recruited him to be i don't want to say a, so you now I, I, I was going to get to this how you feel about all that for one and how do you think that diamond is going to handle the situation you think he's going to turn him into like another foot soldier for cbi or keep him on the straight and narrow and just kind of teach him some self-defense techniques and you know kind of get his confidence so how, how you feel about that whole thing i just i just uh kind of broke down right there so if we go back to the, the rally when that young man was given a powerful speech for someone to be that young mm -hmm. and they was panning the crowd i was just thinking to myself damn Everybody on the shy just basically go act on the shy, walk off that set, walk across the street, and come act in the <laughs> come <laughs> act on Power Book Two because you had Bakari in this crowd, yeah, you had Nook in the crowd, and of course Dre is um, married to Detective DeFranco and she's running for mayor, and mm -hmm. so that was just kind of funny to me to see all the shy connections on another show that's actually taking place in the shy. And young Barack, man, I felt for him because he reminds me of the things that black nerds go through, went through during my era. Like, we're down for our people's causes. We understand why a lot of our people are selling drugs, dads on a role models on around. Um, there's not that person that kind of teach you how to stay off the street. There's not that person they kind of help you navigate the things that go on with a young man when he's going through his teenage years. And we oftentimes black nerds, you, you're not really into the street stuff, but you're down for the causes of black people, but you're more so into technology and science and getting your grades together. Mm -hmm. And then you have to deal with bullying from your own black people that's in the hood that look at you as someone who's a weak victim. Right. And so, I was happy to see Diamond step in and tell this boy, we're going to teach you how to squabble. Right. And I think that what he is going to do is teach this man how to squabble, but not to squabble to be in the streets because he told him, we need politicians like you. We yeah. need people like you that can represent us, that know what we're going through and can put things in place. So I think he's just going to teach him how to squabble and do it in a way where he still stays the same young man he is on the same course and just be able to defend himself good 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 i like that answer uh i think that's what diamond is going to do as well Teach uh, man how to squabble yeah <laughs> shout out to uh to uh um, um, snowfall um, yeah yeah, say, yeah, yeah 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 that that's i think he's gonna keep him on a straight and narrow um I, that's what i was thinking to myself the first time i watched the episode like okay i, I don't you know that, that's what he's gonna do keep him on a straight and narrow he's not gonna you know turn him into this or turn him into that so uh, i think that's a good thing what do you think about the relationship between uh jp and uh and dmac here um uh demarcus because you know kate had her little sit down with jp and you know from mother to son and now it's going from father to son so you know he wants a gun you know he want to be protected and 
and all that. And the, the t his dad and uncle was like, no, I don't want this. And they're having a conversation. And, you know, he's saying, hey, I know that you're gay and all this stuff and you abandoned me and I don't want to hear it. We in the same city. And, you know, he made some points. Um, we also see in this scene that JP was making the same mistake that his mother, Kate, made, you know. And uh, that's kind of interesting right there. So how, how do you feel about that relationship? You like where it's heading or where do you want it to go? How are you feeling, sir? I think they're going to a good place. And he is having the similar issues that Kate Egan is having with her two kids with the caveat of JP's mother, J, uh, D Mac's mother was actively trying to keep JP from his child, mm -hmm. actively doing it. And we don't know how far that level of activity went. Was she doing it to the point where she was threatening JP? Was she doing it to a point where she said, if you come near my child, I'm going to call the police. But having said that, unless JP done something that eluded to threats or danger to the child, it don't matter how much she called the police. You still have a right to see your child. Right. But it is a different scenario when you do have a parent throwing gears into the throwing gears in the sand of the relationship between a parent and the child. So his, his thing is a little different from Kate Egan's, but I can see that D Mac has come a long ways from last season to this point where he's actually sitting in the house with white boy, uncle Tommy and gay father, um, JP. So I do mm -hmm. think that they're taking the relationship in a manner where they're going to be helping each other. And it's going to be a better relationship than what JP has with Kate Egan. If you're running about off the parallel between Kate Egan and her relationship with her kids and JP and his relationship with D-Mad. Okay. Okay. Well said. Well said. Something that I have not been able to put together on where it could potentially go is the parole officer at the uh, barbershop. Oh. Yeah. I like the actor. I like his performance. And he is, in my opinion, doing a pretty decent job of throwing a wrench into all of Mr. Sampson's plans. I, I, I like it. You know, he is making things a bit uh, more complicated. And, I, you know, he was peeping the scene. You know, he can tell that um, Big Red right here was up to no good. Also, uh, young, the uh, old school right here, when he was like, yeah, don't forget about my scratch offs. Was he really talking about scratch offs or drugs? In your opinion? Hell no. He he first of all, he was warning Big Red. Did you see the ear flicker? Yeah. And then yeah. Big Red looked up and seen it was a parole officer. And the parole officer looked at him straight in the face. So yeah. old school got to do a better job of trying to disguise his <laughs> communication. Because the parole officer sitting there looking at all that shit. Then the other thing is, how is the parole officer running up in here getting free damn haircuts? Nigga, you don't get a free haircut just because you my parole officer and then you telling me I got to open my shop up on Sundays to give free cuts to the community as if I've got to do more things to keep you off my back when I'm already doing everything right in the first place. So, you know, um, my opinion of this parole officer, there's something afoot about this parole officer. You know, the way he's dressed, he's dressed like he's stressed in his own personal life. Tie ain't never tied up. Collar's always open. I've seen him sweating a lot. There's more to this parole officer that meets the eye, and I wonder how will it manifest, and how will Diamond either be able to use that as leverage against him or use him in the CBI organization. Uh-oh, ladies and gentlemen. B. Avery has disappeared, and now you are left into the good hands of life gains Lamont until B. Avery comes back. Now, by the way, be sure to comment, share, and you can leave a super chat in the comments for B. Avery because this man puts out great work. He works his butt off. He is constantly working to try to bring you guys entertainment in a varied type of perspective from power to the geek comments. I mean, to the geek con con um, content, um, superhero content, Movie reviews. He does it all. Check him out. And then after you get done dealing with him, you know, come hit your boy or come hit me up. Give me a little something, something. But as we talk about this parole officer, what do you guys think is his deal? Do you think he's a legit outstanding citizen and parole officer? I don't. 
there's something going on in his personal life that is going to lead to a whole lot of issues down the road. I just don't know what it is. I mean, they got my man already sitting in there in Diamond's chair. <laughs> Looking like my man that sing, I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you niggas. He looks just like him. So that makes me think that he is going to be like him and be having some issues going on further on down the road. Now, when B. Avery come back, he might want to pick back up on a parole officer, but I'm going to move us along. And I am going to talk about Jannard dealing with Lil' K and how that grandma, Lil' K's grandma stole the show. So when Jannar first popped up to kill Little K, the grandma ran right out the door and had chocolate chip sugar cookies. And those sugar cookies kept Little K from dying in that moment. And it kept her from dying because she basically told him, you're going to kill me? Because if you kill him, you got to kill me too. You know? And he didn't do it then. But then give another big shout out to Little K grandma because when Officer DeFranco came, she threw shade then too. Now, obviously, she knows he's in the drug game. I don't know if she knows to the degree that he's killing people. But you got to give a big shout out to Big Mama. Big Mama held that shit down, okay? Her Wakanda Forever haircut. She held it down. She was in there planting her tomatoes, doing the tomatoes. And she covered for Little K when DeFranco came. But ladies and gentlemen, the sexiest voice in all the internet has returned. It's the big homie B. Avery. I'm I'm sorry about that, man. Um, my I don't my power my internet had a glitch in the power my power supply and I had to turn on my Wi-Fi. So that's what I'm working on right now. I apologize about that. Sorry, guys. Were you still talking the whole time or no? Oh, whole time. I, I ran the show for you. I, man, I was, I was, I, I was I, a I, band aid. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't even get. I saw. Last thing I heard was uh, the parole officer. Uh, when you was talking about the parole officer, I didn't even get your commentary there, man. So, um, sum that up real quick again. What you were saying, uh, so I can catch back up. <laughs> my my bad. Just get the, give me ten seconds of what you were saying about the the because it was funny. You was you was making a joke. Yeah, I, I was yeah. laughing. Um, uh, we don't we don't know what issues he's got in his personal life because he's always he always looks stressed as hell. Uh -huh. He's getting free haircuts. He's trying to tell Diamond how to run his business. And he's up there looking like my man that sing, I'm living my best life. Ain't <laughs> okay. going back and forth with you <laughs> niggas. He looks just like him. So that tells me that there's something deeper in his personal life. And it's just a matter of, will Diamond be able to exploit it? Okay. Okay. I got you, man. Little yeah. Duval. That's, that's, that's the rapper's name. Little Duval. They they do uh, resemble each other. They do yeah, resemble yeah. each other. But when I was coming back in, man, yeah, I, I heard you talking about uh, Wendell's uh, grandmother. Yeah. Uh, and the cop who we haven't talked about yet, how he, you know, pulling up to the crib, talking about this gentleman right here. He pulling up to the crib. Um, also, uh, and let me know if you've already excuse me, talked about this. Uh, Janar pulls up and was about to blast him in the back of the head, but he's saved by the grandmother with cookies and all this right here um when i was watching that i what, what i would have loved to see is the grandmother getting into her grandson's ass little k or window just saying why do you have the police coming up here looking for you why am i walking outside and see a person in the car around the corner and this Jannar character with a gun to the back of your head what are you getting into sir that is bringing all this heat she didn't have that conversation at all uh, unless it was off screen. And I I wanted to see that, man. Um, I mean, am I tripping or, or, or are you kind of feeling the same as far as uh, wanting to see that those lines of dialogue between them? I, I feel like the reason they didn't give those lines of dialogue is because Big Mama Wakanda forever already know that her son is probably in the drug game. She mm -hmm. I don't feel like she knows he's a killer. But I feel yeah. like she knows he's in the drug game and she doesn't want to address that he's in the drug game. Now, had he had it been known to her that he's killing people, I think she would have jumped down that ass. But, gotcha. okay. um, you know, the fact that she was trying to throw cover for him and she saved his life with those delicious looking cookies. I mean, them cookies look good as hell, man. man I, I'm trying to diet and she up here with these tasty cookies. And we, uh, you know, a shout out to that generation of grandmas. Y'all are some of the strongest.
people to ever live on planet Earth, you black grandmas that basically had to raise grandsons. And that's basically where she's at right now. And so that's probably why she didn't have that conversation with him, because she's just worried about her baby staying alive. I got you. OK, OK. Y'all let us know what y'all think about that. Um, we're going to see. I was about to say, is he when is he, when is he going to die? He died at the end of the episode. So, yeah. uh, you know, what, what, the, what the hell am I talking about right there? And now what that, that was misdirection because at first i didn't think he was gonna die but he's dead yeah he he's he's dead from uh out of control Jannar, not able to uh not able to keep it together so what you think about what do you think about this task force though man between the cpd the fbi the dea um the attorneys off the attorney general's office uh you know uh being led and partial by this cat right here you know at the very beginning of the episode um you know he they are married and he pulls up he pulls up to the side you know and it's like look you don't put your career in front of mine in front of our marriage this is effed up how are you gonna do me like that what you feel about all that man how you feeling um she I, 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 I say this i like the way he addressed her um right. I, I thought that was uh it was fierce but also professional and it's also you know, interesting because they are married. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, where do you draw the line? So that, that was an interesting dynamic right there. Go ahead. How did you feel about it? Oh, I mean, he had legitimate concerns. And yeah. you should have addressed this. You know, first of all, we're married. So that's number one why you should address. Then number two, my, pro my professional relationship is tied into all this. So yeah. you should have said something. And the only reason you didn't is because you know I would have said no. But having yeah. said that, she listed off all the reasons for why he's the man for the job, which she should have done prior to just throwing him under the bus like this. Yeah. She said he's the only one she can trust. I can believe that you're married to him. She said he's the best man for the job. I can believe that because they've shown us already in last seat in last episode that he knows how to handle himself on the streets and get information out of people. So she made great points about why he should have the job. She just didn't go about getting him the job in the correct manner. He has every right to be mad. But I do think that he's going to be hell on wheels in this position. And at some point in time, I think Tommy is going to try to address the mayor to be because I'm going to go ahead and tell you, she's going to get that job of being mayor. Yeah. Because when you get the more power you get as a politician who's having to deal with corrupt dealings, the more barriers, the more drama they can put on you in the story. So she's going to become the mayor. And then Tommy and whoever might be after her real hard. And that's going to make him even more emboldened to protect her. Right on, right on, right on. I like it, man. I like it. I like it. Also, uh, what else I like is the way they're trying to smuggle these drugs in here through condoms. I, I, I <laughs> thought that was kind of funny right. um, as well. But man, 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 we get to see, um, you know, he kind of looks soft in your opinion because he had the, uh, the diabetes in the last mm -hmm. episode. But Miguel is telling them, hey, we need to I'm, we need to you need to come here now. Come see me. I know who did the hit on my truck Took his own people, his right. own family and froze the hand. I, I, how realistic is this? What is the device that that what is the formula? This is crazy. Lamont. Damn. I mean, this looks like something straight out of Terminator or something. Star Wars froze <laughs> their hands and broke it off. The dude passed out. I'm like, whoa. I ain't ever seen Tommy or, well, Diamond, we just met. But I ain't, I don't think I've ever seen Tommy that bothered. Like, oh, damn, I'm, I'm up a creek right here. I better not cross this dude or this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. This is bananas. Um, I did not know Miguel had it in him. What, what do you say, sir? What do you say? Oh, bro, you the, the whole, th this takes a whole different level of psyche right here to, to do something like that, man. That's much harder than shooting somebody in the face or, well, or in the you, head. You got to think. Number one, Miguel is in pain because of what his boss just told him he's going to do to his sister That's if true. something happens. If he makes a move without his saying. They lost that particular person's drugs. And Miguel is trying to make a message to Tommy because he told Miguel told his grandma he will cut that whatever, whatever, if needed be. So now he's trying to show Tommy, look, this is what happens to people that cross me. And Tommy did have a look of 
Tommy did have more of a melancholy look on his face than he normally does. Because normally Tommy would laugh in the face of such craziness as this. He wasn't laughing yeah. this time. Yeah. And basically, be Avery, that was liquid, that was liquid ice. The stuff that we use at science fair projects that you bring and it, it the temperature is like minus 290, whatever it is. And you stick your finger in there, it do freeze instantly. You done. I was about to, it's, so it's liquid time. nitrogen. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it does it that it does it that quick. I, I that mean, quick. Okay. that quick. Like when you carry the vase, whatever vat you put it in, you have to carry that with like special gloves. Right. So imagine okay. just sticking your hands in there. Okay. And now I don't know if it be frozen to the point where your skin would literally come off the way they did in the show. I think that's yeah. TV magic. But you would lose those limbs just by sticking your hand in there. And gotcha. those two guys. What he don't know is when Tommy was in there whispering sweet nothings into the ear of, of his sister, he overheard them talking about the drop point. So yeah. it's easy to make them look like the scapegoat. And he knows no different. He knows no different. Right on. I wonder if Miguel is going to find out that he made a mistake. And, um, you know, if you he think sees he... the product on the street, he's going to yeah. figure out he made a mistake. But he yeah. still might think be under the assumption that it was all the Serbs, that these yeah. guys was trying to double deal with the Serbs. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said that for a higher price. So, right. Miguel, Miguel is uh, he's ruthless, man. He don't he don't give a damn. He don't give a damn. He does not give a damn. Um, I got a little laugh out of this, um, you know, again, because uh, the cop, he thought he tried to threaten a, a window with the, the fingerprints and the eyewitnesses. And, you know, he didn't have anything there, so he had to let him go. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that was kind of funny to me. But we are coming up to the end right here where Jannard is uh, out here looking to for where well, he gets his car stolen. He get his whip stolen by the Serbs. And so, you know, he's losing control. They, they had him hemmed up in episode one against the fence. Now they're leaving him stranded. <laughs> and um, yeah, he, he looks high right there. Man, I, I suck your dick, man. I got these cheeseburgers. <laughs> now he didn't say all of that. <laughs> he didn't say all of that. Uh, please comment if you know what movie that is from. But they left him stranded out here, man. And um, your boy Wendell uh, came up. Um, what's it? Oh, we can, we can talk about that in a second. Uh, actually, why, why are you so defiant uh, against Tommy? I would have gave him some uh, false information to stay alive, but you know you can you can comment there if you want to. But uh, anyway, he kills him. Tommy kills him. Jannar kills Wendell like a dummy. Throws the body outside and goes to get some drugs and gets high. You know, Tommy gets his ice cream and all of that. But yeah, man, how how how'd you feel about the end of this episode, man? And how all that played out. Also, um, I know it seemed like I'm rushing here. But uh, Miguel don't want to re-up with Tommy and Dama no more either. He's like, no, I'm good. You know, y'all want it double last time. You want double again. What the hell is going on? So how 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 are you feeling about all that right there? I know that was a lot, but how 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 do you feel about all that? Well, Miguel is just keeping an eye on Tommy, and Miguel probably don't have the weight. So that's that's easy for him. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of Jannard killing Lil' K, what do you expect? Jannard... He's just like Vic Flynn. They need to they need to hook up and become the new age backstreet boys because they always making backwards ass decisions. Mm -hmm. Both of them are hotheads. Both of them are, are addicts, and maybe they could rub some nickels together and become a a good dynamic duo because they're not moving properly right now. I don't think Jannard really wanted to kill him in that moment. Oh no, he did, no. He did out of rage and anger because Lil K was just telling him, "Look, dude, you you silly." Yeah. You silly out here on these streets. You stupid. He done lost his car. He done lost his money. He's in debt to all these people. He's got death threats from all these people. And Lil K was just telling him the truth. And when yeah. the truth smacked Jannard up in the face, he ain't want to yeah. hear it. Got so emotional. he tried to bury it, you know, yeah. and that's what he did. And I want to say you could see Jannard dying. But his character is just too crazy to kill, which means the collateral damage is going to be Shanti. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. Me neither. I don't. I don't, I don't want neither. that to happen. No. I, I don't. I, I like Shanti now. I like Shanti now. Yeah. I like Shanti now. You think? Uh, you think? Um, uh, J Mac 
is gonna get in some more trouble stealing the gun. Oh yeah, D Max in trouble. He, he I said that I say J Mac D Mac. You said J Mac. D Mac is gonna do something silly because you gotta think he's been hemmed up in the house trying to heal all these weeks. Ain't been mm -hmm. on the street. Really ain't left the house. He's tired of being cooped up in the crib. He wants yeah. to get out on them streets, get some air, get his sea legs back. Probably gets to making more money. And when he do return back to the streets, they're not going to be too happy to see him. They're going to want to know where the hell you've been at, what you've been doing, what you're up to. And um, he might be greeted with some some tension. And the guy that and the, and the the guy Tommy pulled a gun on. It's just like this, man. Tommy was going to kill him either way you look at. It. When Tommy put that hoodie on, that's just like him being ghost. Yeah. When Ghost is put on the hoodie, you die. When Tommy put on the hoodie, you die. No matter what this guy said, he was gonna die. So it's if true. anything, he probably should have tried to fight back, you know. Yeah. Instead of getting both your kneecaps blowed out, then you get shot yeah. in the head. Give right. a little fight back. Right. I agree, man. I agree. I agree. And I, I really cannot wait to see how also things don't play out between Tommy Diamond and Miguel. Yeah. Um, this is very, very interesting, right? I think he's gonna find out. I don't know. I mean, he has to. He has to find out. Uh, that would be a, a shame uh, if he didn't. But y'all let us know what y'all think about that. Lamont, what have we not discussed in the episode yet that is worth talking about, sir? Let us know. Let us know. No, I mean, I think we, I think we pretty much covered everything, man. And, you know, I'm a little delirious from flying <laughs> four hours from across the East Coast to the West Coast. So I really can't think of nothing else we, we, we didn't cover. Yeah, man. You yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Jannard here is uh he's tripping, man. Um, he was already high, and then he's gonna shoot up again. He's let me get two bags of that heroin. Uh, I thought I don't I look, this is gonna show my level of like education. I thought heroin when you had to shoot up with a needle. That's how they depict it most of the time. Okay, you know, okay. That you 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 boil it on a spoon <laughs> and then you tie yeah. a tie and you stick it into your vein. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And um, I I got a laugh out of this. Hey, you want to ride me tomorrow? Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> so, so my ride. He's and, like, and, we've all been there before. He's like, yeah. no, driving lessons, you know. And she laughed. At but it. look, that was she, she, she still want, want him to pick up, pick her up. Look, yeah. look, look, man. That's he pick her up early in the morning, get her a uh -huh. little breakfast, pick her up when she get off work, they'll be in the bed smashing. All right, let Lamont say it. Next episode, they're gonna smash. I'm gonna laugh my ass off if they do. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a, a, a nice hand clap, sir, okay. if they do get it in uh next episode. But guys, that is all we have for this latest episode three of Power Book Four Four Season Two, titled War and Ice Cream. Tommy got his ice cream, Tommy got his ice cream. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed our commentary. And again, I apologize about the technical glitch. And Lamont, thank you so much for holding me down until I was able to get back in here. What do you have going on, sir, on your lovely Swallowback channel that you want to give a shout out to all the people out there? Um, I will be go even though I'm out of town, I will be going live Saturday night again at um, 8 p.m. Eastern time to cover what happens on this coming episode. So be sure to tune in. Be sure to get ready to have some fun. And I'll drop a trailer breakdown. And, and I've been kind of slacking on the, the shy just because of the timing of me being able to get those videos up when stuff going on in my life. So just bear with me. But that's what's going to be coming this week. You guys stay tuned. Be sure to give B. Avery those super chats when you go and comment on this video. And uh, follow the brother. He's the hardest working dude on YouTube. And let's I'm make this guy that. grow. Thank you very much, Lamont. I do appreciate it. I, I do all right on YouTube. And yeah, if this is your first time here, you know, these are all the lives. These are all the videos. You know, I, I reacted to the Aquaman 2 trailer, um, the teaser trailer of the trailer. I was going to say, can yeah. we really call that a trailer? <laughs> right, right, right. If you're into superhero stuff, every and comic book news, every uh, Sunday, 6 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. CST, I break down all the comic book stuff, whether it's Marvel, DC, or anyone in between. So if you're into that type of stuff, check me out there as well. But guys, again, we just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that I'm B. Avery. That's Lamont. And that's just our opinion. Peace out. And we'll see you next time.